Covering the Northern Bahamas, you're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture's Fresh Start Program graduation ceremony taking place recently. Over 500 persons applied for the opportunity, and after an interviewing and a training process, 76 of them can boast of completing the program. Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture, the Honorable Michael Pintard, congratulating the graduates as well as their support teams. What you have done over the course of the last uh, few months really exemplifies the kind of discipline and character and determination that you have shown. I know some of the struggles many of you have had personally, and nevertheless, you rose above those challenges. And so we are proud of you, and we know that this is yet another start in your life, and you will be doing incredible things. But just before I speak to you, let me say to all of your support team, to parents, and guardians, and friends, husband and wives, to teachers and coaches, to the mentors and the lecturers, to all of you who have deposited in our young people's lives, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of a grateful country and this government, thank you very much. The sacrifices that you've made is incredible. Graduates receive their skill certificates, Bahama host certificates, as well as certificates from the Migrant Bahama Customer Service Training Program. Minister Pintard commending the graduates for taking the initiative to equip themselves with skills that can never be taken away from them. Having skills put them in a position where no matter which government is in, they get to write the next chapter in their own life because it does not depend ultimately on government. Where you go in this life, it depends on to what extent you are prepared to go to door one and when it's closed, you go to door two and when that's shut, you draw kick door number three down because you are equipped to do it. Yes, sometimes connections and who you know and what organization you're associated with may get you in the door. It does not guarantee that you stay. It certainly doesn't guarantee your elevation, but more importantly, it doesn't equip you to make a difference. Scores of young girls preparing for the launch of another season of the Princess Court program. The Purity Initiative kicks off on Saturday and will run for a period of six weeks. Stephanie Burrows is the executive director. She says she is encouraged as the program continues to mold young women into productive citizens of society. To date, we have a number of princesses that are really doing well in the community and in school. To date, we have about 23 prefects. We have five head girls, one policeman, five teachers, 21 princesses who are now in college. We had one Miss Grand Bahama. We had six students who were nominated as student of the year. And we have 30 churches that participate in the princess court. And we also have 16 schools. Deborah Pratt. A leader with the Princess Court program says the young girls are taught important life lessons. We have activities such as arts and crafts, cooking, baking, etiquette, fun and fitness, health and hygiene, sewing, and skin care. And at the end of the four to six weeks, we come together for the grand ceremony that we call a pledging ceremony. This is where the girls receive their, the first time girls who are pledging for the first time, the first time princesses, they receive what we call their purity pearls. So we would often encourage the parents, the parents to be there at the pledging ceremony and the parents will be the ones to actually place the pearls on their daughters. March will be celebrated as Police Month. Events will begin tomorrow, March 1st, with the semifinals of the police debate and speech competition at the Police Training College. Superintendent Walter Henderson encouraging everyone to take time out and attend. In the debate competition, the semifinals, the two teams going up against each other will be mobile versus central for the debate. And the topic is, be it resolved, all officers should undergo psychological and physical exams prior to re-engagement. Also on this coming Thursday will be the semi-finals
for our speech competition. And that will, is also between Mobile and Western Division. Those two teams will go up for the speech semifinals. And so the topic for that is the implementation of a wellness program and its implications on an officer's overall health and performance indicators. The competition will begin at 7 p.m. Henderson says the purpose of the debate and speech competition is to showcase the talent within the organization. It helps to cause officers to do research to find different sources that support uh, their side, even though uh, at times you may be debating a side that you really don't believe, but to find that there's always two coin to each topic and to be open-minded, to be able to grasp the things that are strong and supportive and to be able to share that information with others. And now it is time to ask the doctor. And welcome. A young viewer sent this question. I have sickle cell disease and have been admitted to the hospital for low blood. Why has my blood been so low to the point where I require blood transfusion? Thank you for such a wonderful question that touches on a very important issue of sickle cell disease or sickle cell anemia, especially for a majority of black population like the Bahamas. Before I address the question, it's important that we all understand some basic information about sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell disease is an inherited form of anemia, which means it is acquired from both parents. It's a condition in which there aren't enough healthy red blood cells to carry adequate oxygen throughout your body. If only one parent carries the gene, then a child will not be born with this very serious condition. But the child has a 50% chance of also being a carrier and passing the gene on to his or her children. It is usually diagnosed in young babies and toddlers. There's no cure for sickle cell disease, but there are treatments to manage the condition and relieve symptoms as they occur, which include medications and sometimes blood transfusions. I'm Dr. Mooney Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. Don't go away, Ricardo Lightborn is up next to the Check on Sports. 